so I saw other people go through physical, you know, they look and sound different from the seven days. Uh, a friend, Connie, right. She, she healed her knees as a byproduct of, of working on her voice, which was amazing. And <laughs> people were, were crying and, and, and saying, you know, they, they looked at things they've never looked at in themselves before. And, I mean, even just, just doing that, that kind of stuff is, is a powerful experience. Um, how, how did you get to create the vocal transformation work? How did you, how did you get to this place? So I was a professional singer. I was, I was, they found my voice when I was five years old and they started training me. Right. So I Who's learned <laughs> my, my teachers in my school. I have a, I have a very funny story where I was in a pageant in kindergarten and I was supposed to not sing. It wasn't my job to sing. There was this little boy who was supposed to sing God Bless America in this pageant. And I was just saying a little, little speech about like Abraham Lincoln. It was like this Americana theme. <laughs> and the day before the pageant, his mother came in and said, he can't sing God Bless America. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. He cannot say that word. We didn't know he had volunteered to do this. So I saw my teachers in a state of well, who's gonna sing this? And I just said, I'll do it, right? And they didn't know that I could sing. I don't know that I knew. I mean, I must've known that I could sing. I can't remember if I was singing back then, but I just saw that they needed help. And that's kind of who I've always been since I've come here. I've just, I see a, a hole that needs filling and I'll go and fill it, right? So, um, so yeah, I, I, I said yes, and I sang, and my parents tell me the story. They were crying. Everyone was handing tissues to my mother. Oh my God, this girl can sing, right? So what happens when they find a talent? When, when someone finds a talent at a young age is they just, they throw you in. There you go. Here's lessons. You're going to learn how to do this. You're going to be a star, right? And I was all on board for that. I loved it. I loved the attention. I was really into it. And I love that attention because there was other things going on in my life that were actually quite hard at that time, which is part of what this work has come to. And I wouldn't have known that until I was 33 years old. So fast forward to some deep trauma work and finding out like what started to happen at that point. It was, it was a time in my life where I would have been quiet, but something in my soul just reached out. And then they taught me how to sing. So the foundation of the work is there's classical voice training involved in this. I know the muscles and how the voice works. I even use this voice sometimes in ways beyond what a classical voice training would give you because even that is limited in its approach, right? So from, from learning how to use my voice classically and- Can I interrupt you again really yeah. quick? Mm -hmm. Because someone, I was telling someone about, the, again, the retreat to a lot of people and they said, oh, Azoff, the, um, there was an Azoff in the record industry, like someone's Last name was Azoff. Was that your family? In the yeah, music his name is Irving Azoff. He's very Irving big Azoff. in the music industry. He doesn't even know that I exist. I bet it's you're very, related. If we're related. It's a very funny phenomenon in my family. He's got this huge success uh, in, the, in the music industry. And I have this voice. I've always had this very powerful voice, but we're not the two sides, the East Coast and the West Coast. It's kind of like the, the gangs. We're not connected to each other. So one day maybe Irv and I will meet each other and he will, and I will be able to say here, we're in the same family and this is the work that I do, this vocal work, you know, it's, um, I could probably benefit like 90% of the people he assigned, you know, I could probably go in there and really help them activate deeper into their art and deeper into their voice. And maybe one day that'll happen. Well, let's send him this interview and see what he thinks. <laughs> do that. That's a great idea. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so the work started there, I would say, but I was, uh, I was singing professionally and that was my goal, right? That was my whole identity was around like being a professional singer that comes with so much pressure, the pressure of the human voice. When you find, when you find you have a talent, you just have to be the best at it. We go into that competitive spirit. We have to audition. We have to get roles. We, we have to keep on, you know, getting better at this so that we could be the best. And there was just a lot of that growing up where I was, solely focused on the performance aspect of it and missing out on what I now know, which is why we have a voice and what the voice, the medicine that our voice is for ourselves and the world, right? Did you love it at the time? For sure, yeah. It was definitely, pr there was pressure of like always being really good. I remember when I was younger, 
I'd always get sick before my opening nights of performances that I was in. I'd have like 102 fever and I'd always have to do the first performance sick and push myself through this fever. Now, if you go into the chakra work, which comes into this vocal work, that's all solar plexus speaking, right? The fire inside of us, the solar plexus is your house of your ego and it's where your insecurity lives. So nervousness and insecurity and doubt would bring the fire, which would then of course give me that fever. And now I understand that as an adult, but as a child, I was just sabotaging myself because my solar plexus was activating because of fear that was taking over that I wasn't gonna be good enough or that I was gonna crack on that high note or that something was gonna go wrong, right? So many of us have stage fright, we get it. It feels like your heart starts to race, your tongue goes numb, all the energy moves up towards the head, you can't catch your breath, you can't get underneath it, right? And, and your voice gets really shaky and breaky because there's so much energy moving into the throat and into the head because all of your prana is moving up towards the head because you're freaking out, right? So, um, so that was happening to me, but I, I loved it. I mean, my whole identity was wrapped around, around being a singer until I started to really resent that, right? As you get older, you're like, who's Marin without that, right? And so I, I started to really want to know what was going on beyond just the singing voice. And, and the singing voice was given to me as performance, right? I now know that singing is prayer, right? So there's a very different way of, of looking at your voice is the offering of your spirit to the world. The vibrational power of your spirit moves through your earth body. And that offers a frequency to the planet. If you're looking at a quantum level to this earth and not our ego and self identities, if you're looking at a quantum level, it's one energy, it's one soul. We individualize into these, into these bodies and we have sovereignty over this or and responsibility over this incarnation, we'll say. But everything you do in this life affects the entire grid of energy that we're all part of. There is no separation between anything. It's very illusory, the separation. So I always say with your voice, what you say, what you don't say, how you say it, how you don't say it, and who you say it to and who you don't say it to creates your life, it creates your world. In the ancient Vedic texts, they talk about the human voice as unmanifest form. The power within the human frequency of our voice creates the physical world. Can your listeners at home even, even think about this for a second when they think about themselves when they when they when they really bring their awareness into their own life and the power that they actually have most of us believe that the world is happening to us but we are co-creators of this entire experience and what we do every single day of our lives matters and we expect someone from the outside world to think and feel the way we think and feel and to do something. They're the ones with the power. They've got, we've voted them into office. They're the ones who can make the vote, whatever it is, right? They're the ones with the money. They're the ones with the resources. I'm not that person. But meanwhile, you have a cosmic spirit that is running through every cell of your earth intelligence, your body. And when you use your voice in that power, your physical frequency that gets created from that collapses into physical form. Even though the human voice is not seen by the eye, right? It's a physically um, uh, measurable thing. It's a frequency pattern coming out of you that then will collapse into reality. 